scientists just confirmed it. 3. I Atlas, a Manhattan-sized interstellar object, has accelerated across the solar system at 170,000 miles per hour, without shedding any detectable mass. Its blue bright glow and non-gravitational trajectory break every rule about comets. If a 5 billion ton gas cloud fails to appear, physics itself is on trial and the implications ripple far beyond astronomy. What exactly is pushing Atlas and what aren't we being told? Avi Loeb, professor of astrophysics at Harvard, has become one of the most recognizable voices in debates like this. Not because he claims to have all the answers, but because he insists on evidence before theory. Early in the 3i Atlas saga, Loeb surprised colleagues by placing the odds of a technological explanation as high as 40%. That was before the data flood began. Now, after years of controversy following his work on Oumuamua, Loeb urges a different kind of discipline. He describes our encounter with 3i Atlas as a blind date. You show up, you pay attention, and you do not make up your mind before you have met the guest. He says, we are on a blind date with 3i Atlas, do not fall in love before you see the face. This approach is not about dampening curiosity, it is about refusing to let expectation cloud observation. Loeb's public talks and private correspondence reveal a careful line. He warns against both overselling the extraordinary and dismissing the unexplained too quickly. The lesson is clear. Let the object speak for itself and let the measurements come before the headlines. This way of thinking is not just academic caution. It is a method that shapes how scientists, journalists, and the public approach every new anomaly. For Loeb, the story of 3i Atlas is a test of process as much as physics. He advocates for transparency, open data, and a willingness to update beliefs as the facts change. In the end, what matters is not how strange the object seems, but how strong the evidence is. With 3i Atlas, the rule is simple. Observe first, decide later. That is the only way to find out if we are meeting a cosmic neighbor or just seeing nature at its most creative. At its core, 3i Atlas is a Manhattan-scale object, about 1.8 kilometers across, with a mass estimated at 33 billion tons. It entered the solar system on a hyperbolic path, clocking in at nearly 170,000 miles per hour. On October 29th, it swept past the sun at perihelion, triggering a global campaign to capture every possible measurement. What followed has left researchers with nine distinct anomalies, each backed by hard data. First, the trajectory. 3i Atlas displays non-gravitational acceleration at a level well beyond what solar radiation pressure can explain. JPL's database logs this acceleration at more than five sigma above expected values. Standard comet models would require it to lose nearly a fifth of its total mass in gas and dust to produce this effect but there is no sign of a 5 billion ton cloud trailing behind. Second, its color. Most comets trend toward the red, dominated by dust and carbon-rich compounds. Atlas, by contrast, shifted blue as it neared the sun, a rare signature confirmed by ground and space-based spectrophotometry. The blue peak coincided with perihelion, the very moment when a craft might perform a high-speed, Oberth-like maneuver. Third, rapid brightening. The object's light curve spiked faster and higher than predicted, outpacing standard outgassing models by a wide margin. Photometric campaigns tracked the surge, but found no matching increase in gas emission lines. Fourth, a four arc second offset in right ascension, measured by ALMA on October 30th, forced urgent recalculation of its orbit. This offset is not trivial, it represents a spatial displacement far outside normal comet behavior. Fifth, the shape and structure. Observations reveal a stable, unfragmented body, even as it endured the intense forces of perihelion. No debris, no satellite objects, no sign of the kind of breakup seen in stressed comets. Sixth, the absence of emission lines. Early December, spectroscopic sweeps failed to detect the classic signatures of volatile gases. No CN, C2, or water lines above background noise. Seventh, irregular luminosity fluctuations. 
The light curve shows unpredictable swings that do not match simple rotation or tumbling. Eighth, the hyperbolic excess velocity. Atlas entered faster than either Oumuamua or Borisov, setting a new benchmark for interstellar visitors. Ninth, the anomaly tally itself. No previous object, not even Oumuamua, has stacked this many statistically significant outliers in one package. Each anomaly is a data point, not an interpretation, a growing file of measurements that now define the mystery of 3i Atlas. The debate around 3i Atlas now hinges on a single testable prediction. If the observed acceleration is the work of natural cometary outgassing, physics sets a clear threshold. Conservation of momentum demands that nearly 20% of the object S mass must be ejected as gas and dust to account for the trajectory shift. For a body weighing in at 33 billion tons, that translates to 5 billion tons of lost material, enough to form a coma and tail visible across the solar system. This is not just a theoretical exercise. Standard comet models predict that such a mass loss would leave behind a sprawling cloud, rich in water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other volatiles glowing with emission lines in the ultraviolet and infrared. Spectrometers on ground-based telescopes and solar observatories would pick up these signatures without ambiguity. The Coma S expansion, at speeds measured in kilometers per second, should be trackable for weeks after perihelion. Modeling teams have run the numbers using a range of plausible parameters, nuclear size, density, ejection speed, and active area. The results always circle back to the same conclusion. To generate the kind of non-gravitational acceleration seen by JPL and ALMA, Atlas would need to shed a fifth of its mass in a matter of weeks. This is not a subtle effect. A gas cloud of this magnitude should dominate the field, outshining most comets and leaving a chemical fingerprint in every observing band from the ultraviolet to the radio. The outgassing hypothesis is now on the clock. If no coma or emission lines appear in the follow-up data, the natural explanation fails its own stress test. The object has become its own experiment. Either the sky fills with 5 billion tons of lost mass, or the case for non-natural acceleration steps out of the realm of speculation and into the evidence file. The next phase depends entirely on what the instruments record. During the final week of October, as 3i Atlas slipped behind the sun from Earth's perspective, responsibility for tracking this interstellar visitor passed to a handful of robotic sentinels orbiting far beyond our planet. With ground-based telescopes blinded by solar glare from October 25th through the 29th, mission operators at Stereo, Soho, and GOES coordinated a high-stakes relay. Each spacecraft, designed for uninterrupted solar monitoring, brought its own strengths and limitations to the task. Stereo's twin observatories, positioned to view the sun from different vantage points, maintained a steady cadence of images. Their SECI cameras cycled through exposures, balancing the need for solar weather data with the rare opportunity to capture an interstellar object in conjunction. Operators tracked instrument health and storage, knowing that even a brief safe mode or calibration cycle could mean missing a crucial frame. Although short gaps are a routine part of space operations, Stereo's duty cycle is engineered for resilience. Brief interruptions, not days-long outages, are the norm. SOHO, stationed at the Earth-Sun L1 point, continued its decades-long vigil with the Lasco coronagraphs. The mission planning teams adjusted imaging sequences to maximize sky coverage during the conjunction window. While scheduled station keeping or instrument maintenance could introduce minor lapses, the expectation was near-continuous coverage with only short, predictable downtimes. For stereo and SOHO alike, telemetry bandwidth and the deep space network schedules shaped the flow of raw data back to Earth sometimes introducing hours of latency, but rarely causing true blind spots. GOES satellites, orbiting in geostationary belts, added another layer of redundancy. Their X-ray and extreme ultraviolet instruments, always sun-pointed except during brief maneuvers, provided high-cadence flux measurements and context for any sudden changes in the object's brightness. 
Operators monitored for sector mapping or calibration events, which typically last only minutes each day. Throughout this period, mission control rooms and virtual channels buzzed with updates. Teams cross-checked timestamps, flagged any telemetry dropouts, and prepared contingency plans in case of unexpected spacecraft events. The goal was clear, to maintain an unbroken chain of observations as Atlas rounded perihelion, bridging the days when Earth-based telescopes could only wait. By leveraging overlapping spacecraft coverage and robust operational routines, the International Solar Watcher Network minimized the risk of missing the moment when the object's behavior might change. Any brief data gaps would be cataloged and accounted for during analysis, but the expectation remained that, barring major anomalies, the record of ATLAS's passage through conjunction would be as complete as modern solar monitoring allowed. On the night of October 30th, a routine astrometric session at the Atacama Large Millimeter and Submillimeter Array took an unexpected turn. As the team logged the latest position of 3I Atlas, the right ascension reading landed nearly four arc seconds off the predicted path. For a solar system object, that kind of discrepancy would raise eyebrows. For an interstellar visitor, already under scrutiny for its odd acceleration, it set off alarms. ALMA's radio and millimeter wave receivers are built for precision. Under normal conditions, their astrometric accuracy can pin down a target's sky position to fractions of an arc second, even when the object is faint or moving fast. The offset was not a calibration artifact or a software glitch. Cross-checks against background quasars and internal timing confirmed the measurement. Orbit analysts at the observatory moved quickly, rerunning their fit with the new data. The update showed a trajectory now drifting steadily away from the expected curve. The four arc second shift might sound small, but in practical terms, it meant that 3I Atlas was tens of thousands of kilometers from where gravitational models said it should be. The data packet, stamped with the time and observer ID, was uploaded to the International Clearinghouse within hours. By sunrise in Chile, teams at JPL and amateur networks worldwide were already pulling the revised ephemeris. Inside the ALMA control building, the mood shifted from routine to urgent. The lead observer's log for that night reads, We need to update the orbit. This is anomalous. The recalculation forced a scramble. Telescope schedules, radar predictions, and even planned spacecraft imaging windows had to be adjusted. The offset was large enough that without fast action, follow-up observations risked missing the object entirely. The precision of ALMA's measurement left little room for doubt. This was not a minor bookkeeping error or a case of mistaken identity. The offset was real, and it demanded an explanation. Analysts worked through the night, comparing the new data point to every known source of error instrument drift, atmospheric effects, even the possibility of an unmodeled gravitational nudge. Nothing fit. The object's path had jolted off course and no one could say why. As the news spread through the astronomical community, the four arc second anomaly became a rallying point. The urgency of the orbit update underscored just how quickly the situation could change. For the team's tracking 3I Atlas, the message was clear. The mystery was deepening and every new measurement counted. On October 2nd and 3rd, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter's high-rise camera targeted 3I Atlas near its closest approach to Mars, a rare chance for high-resolution imaging from another planet's vantage. Those images never appeared in public archives, even as weeks passed. NASA's official explanation pointed to calibration reviews and low signal, but internal memos circulated among planetary scientists and journalists raising questions about why raw data remained locked down. By early November, the House Science Committee sent a formal request for disclosure, citing public interest and the object's scientific significance, a direct call for an explanation of why data would be embargoed on an interstellar visitor when every other observatory was sharing updates in near real time. Behind closed doors, NASA's communications office debated the risks of premature release. Some officials argued that ambiguous noisy images could fuel wild speculation or be misinterpreted by the public. Others, including several principal investigators, warned that withholding data would only erode trust and invite more controversy. The longer the silence, the more the story shifted from the object itself to the institutions controlling the information, silence became the story. 
This episode has become a flashpoint for the broader debate over scientific transparency. The call for open, immediate data release is not just about satisfying curiosity, it is about ensuring independent teams, from professional astronomers to skilled amateurs, can verify findings and challenge interpretations. With 3i Atlas, the need for independent verification has never been clearer. As ground-based telescopes and potential observers like the European Space Agency spacecraft JUICE prepare for follow-up, the spotlight now falls as much on institutional openness as on the object streaking through the solar system. Inside ESA mission planning suite, the debate over JUICE's November imaging slot grew sharper as the object's anomalies piled up. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, fresh from its cruise phase, faced a rare crossroads. Should it risk a detour from its tightly scripted path to target 3i Atlas or stay locked on its prime science objectives? The Science Council weighed the options in a series of late October teleconferences. Advocates pointed to the unprecedented chance, a single window in November before JUICE committed to Jovian operations, where its imaging systems could capture the spectrum and drift of an interstellar object showing unexplained acceleration. Engineers warned that even a minor deviation could eat into the spacecraft's safety margins and data volume budgets. The question wasn't just about curiosity. Every maneuver, every data packet, had to justify itself against years of planning and billions of euros. The Council's internal minutes noted that imaging 3i Atlas pushes safe pointing margins and competes with mainline data volume budgets. Yet the potential payoff, a direct look at the blue spectrum, a chance to catch drift in real time, was hard to ignore. The final decision set the stakes. If Juice attempted the shot, it would happen in November, and only then. After that, the window would close and the mission would return to its primary schedule. For now, all eyes turned to the Science Council's watch list, waiting to see if Europe's flagship explorer would seize the opportunity or play it safe. The next few weeks will decide whether 3i Atlas rewrites the textbooks or slips quietly into the catalogue of interstellar mysteries. Around the world, observatories are preparing for a concentrated campaign, with early December flagged as the prime window for ground-based recovery. Teams at Keck, VLT, Gemini, and a network of skilled amateurs have reserved their clearest nights between December 3rd and 10th, aiming to catch the object as soon as it emerges from the sun's glare. The strategy is simple. Maximize sky coverage, coordinate time zones, and share raw data as fast as it lands. Every spectrum, every astrometric point feeds into a global database, open to anyone willing to test the numbers for themselves. On December 12th, radar operators stand by for a possible echo experiment, contingent on optical reacquisition. If successful, a radar ping could reveal shape, spin, and even hints of surface structure. Details that no camera can supply from this distance. The stakes are clear. If the expected gas cloud or emission lines fail to appear, the case for non-natural acceleration strengthens. If the cloud materializes, the standard comet model survives another day. Either way, the outcome will ripple through planetary science, challenging assumptions about what interstellar objects can do. For now, the checklist is public and the countdown is live. The next observation could change everything. 3i Atlas traveled past the Sun at nearly 170,000 miles per hour, showing non-gravitational acceleration and no signs of mass loss. Data from Stereo, Soho, and GOES tracked its unusual brightening and a blue shifted spectrum, while ground telescopes prepare for a concentrated observation window in early December. ALMA detected a four-arc second trajectory shift, and the absence of a five billion ton gas cloud challenges the standard comet explanation. Despite nine confirmed anomalies and withheld Mars reconnaissance orbiter images, the cause of 3i Atlas's acceleration remains unverified. Congressional inquiries and the European Space Agency's JUICE mission highlight the global demand for transparency and further data. As of now, there is no direct evidence of artificial propulsion, but the object's unexplained behavior forces a reconsideration of current models. The final assessment depends on data still to be released and analyzed. Until then, the mystery of 3i Atlas stands as a test of scientific openness, 
and of the limits of what we know about interstellar visitors.